What's going on everybody? It looks like we're live. 3D Printing Sunday. The whole point of these streams is to pick a project and walk through the modeling of it in 3D every week. This week the uh, plan is that I didn't necessarily have a plan. Over the last couple of weeks we'd been working on a 3D printed 3D printable trailer. And I think we'll work on that towards the end of this stream as well. But we need to decide on a project to work through first. And we've worked on some things associated with the trailer, some things not so associated with it. Almost everything we're doing is to be based in 3D printing. So this week, I think what I was kind of thinking about doing at least was doing something like shop tool related. Um, something, something simple you guys can can print from home or, you know, print just easily. So I thought that that would be some, I wanted to, to see what you guys thought on a shop tool, you know, drill press, bench grinder, that type of thing. Come up with, come up with some idea. We'll run through that in the chat while everyone checks in where everyone's from the, uh, we'll see, let's see. I got going to the top Portland, Oregon, no, two Portland's right in a way, right in a row. I mean, isn't that nice? Uh, Bidwell, Ohio, that Connecticut, see Missouri, 77, not bad. It was hot. We were out running all day today, man. It was, it was hot. Uh, Maine, Michigan, St. Cloud, Minnesota, Phoenix, Arizona, another Arizona. Um, yeah, it was, it was steamy here today. It was, uh, it was a lot, but. We got out and I, yesterday we were floating on the river um, and I got some, doesn't show up on camera so much, but I've got some good sunburn spots like here and here must have missed my application of sunscreen just ever so slightly. As far as what uh, printer I'm using, normally I use my TiVos. Recently, I just got this new one that's sitting over here on the, in the corner right now. Uh, and that one will get swapped into the position. This one's from lot max and it's a, it's a new printer, dual extruder, two color deal. So. That's, uh, that's something that, you know, is, is, uh, I'm, I'm working through right now some tuning. It's my first one with auto bed leveling. And I'm just trying to make sure that everything works properly with it a little bit, a little bit new as far as that goes. A tire mount machine. I like that idea. Although that is, a uh, that would probably be a lot of parts, a lathe, simple lathe would be kind of fun. I'd like that idea. Even if it was just a desktop style, um, we could probably make a lathe pretty, you know, fairly easily. Let's do a lathe. Ryan Davis had said that. I like that idea. I don't know why. Ryan Davis, I, I think you're, I think you got it. Let's do, let's knock out a very simple bench top lathe. So we're going to switch into Fusion 360. Got a blank document here. Uh, again, Fusion 360 we use because it's a free, uh, program that you can download, at least in the US. Go from there. Uh, we're going to walk through the steps, but let's do the other thing that we always have to do. And that is, let's look up a bench top lathe. I've got one of, I've got a little bench top lathe. And I think mine is from uh, Excel. Uh, Let's see who we can let's just go to images and see which ones we can see. I'd like to do this one's this one's pretty similar to mine right here. Let's go to that one. We've got yeah. This one's this one's about like I oh it's a little fancier with the digital display and stuff like that, but I think we'll we'll do something about like this. Let's see if this thing has some basic overall dimensions. Uh, ch -ch 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 adjustable. It's got the specs on a lot of the. So we know it's an eight inch diameter, sixteen inch, sixteen inch. Ba oh, here we go. Swing over bed, swing over cross. Does it have overall dimensions? No. Well, we'll just kind of, we'll just kind of base it off of that stuff. So I'm going to use 
I'm just kind of going to wing this thing. I'm not going to really care 100% about dimensions because lathes can be all kinds of sizes, right? So I'm just going to keep a picture of this thing up. We're going to go from there. So I'll put that above in a window where I can see it. A 3D printed 3D printer. Ooh, too mad. That is funny. <laughs> Man, that would be a 3D printer inception is also a pretty good idea. Let's do the lathe though. I already, I've, I've committed to this. So one thing I am going to do is I'm going to try a, new, a slightly new style on drafting, which isn't necessarily, um, I don't know that it's super important for a, something like this. It's, it's something I've been reading on with how, uh, what do you call this? Fusion handles things versus, you know, things like SolidWorks. So when I'm going to create a new part, I'm going to just start with a new component within the part to start. And this little dot next to it means that that's the active one. So that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to start this one by starting a new component first. So we're going to start, I'm going to start with the base of this, you know, kind of the, the foot area. We're just going to start drawing some dimensions. If we know that this thing would normally have a 16 inch, you know, working area, I think overall we can kind of say that it's going to be, let's call it 24 inches overall. Details on the page. I'll, I don't think that I saw exact dimensions. Or at least I didn't. I just saw working area and stuff like that. I just didn't see. read more or less. Yeah. Just doesn't have everything. It's okay. Like I said, this really, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to add, so say it's going to be, if it's 24 inches, even if it was, let's see. Um, so 24 times times 25.4 would make that. That's not right, obviously. Well, it should be, right? Oh, and then I need to do it in 10th scale, duh. That's just the, wow. I was in the sun all day, so I should be a little brain dead. It's, I can't, even I surprise myself sometimes. So 60 there, just going to go back up to my photo up top just so I can see a few things. Uh, let's go 10. This is on this part. I'm going to cre you know, create this under this base piece here. You can see it's got kind of a cutout under the bottom side there. That's what we're going to gonna create that to the start. Just give ourselves a, a working base. So let's say a four mil cutout, 35 is fine. We're just going to kind of, a functional lathe, I mean, we might make some of the parts somewhat functional. You know, we might be able to make the head spin, that type of stuff. So let's go. Yeah. Trying to. That's wider than it needs to be. Something like that. Um. All right, we're going to do cut a few things, try and hollow this thing out a little bit, make it. Yes, and I know you can find some files like this. Half the time, the files, though, on Thingiverse aren't that great. Like, a lot of them are just either kind of meh in general, or they're all, they're too 
simple or, you know. Let's... So I want to make sure that it's in line with the undercut. Now, one thing we could do is just dimension that same amount. We only did a four millimeter cut, or we could come around, use P for project, grab that line and then hit enter. And that'll bring that line over onto our sketch plane. And then we can use it and grab that top line and use the collinear function. Now, if we were ever to adjust the height of this, this center cutout, that would always adjust with it. So one of those things that if you tie things like that together, then changes you make in the future will, will stay in place. Let's cut all the way through. Do that, then we can In this base, we're just going to go ahead and kind of also this, I guess I'm going to delete that sketch. We're going to edit that previous sketch. And we're going to kind of put the rail right into this that the tail stock and the cutting head and all that would slide along. So let's we're going to simplify it just to make it still 3D printable, but put a construction line between those just so we know everything stays nice and horizontal. Got a 60 degree. Most printers should be able to do this without using support material, so you should be all right. And now let's just find our center point. Make sure that's equal. That'll allow us to make some adjustments. So we're going to also create, grab those two. That'll take it the entire distance. We obviously don't necessarily need to be the entire, but we'll make some, make some modifications as we go. So this is kind of give us our bed. I think we can keep things pretty simple like this and start on the motor the drive area so i'm going to create a, another new component because i know we're going to be doing that base it off of that face let's see i think we can just trying to kind of look at the shaping Create a couple, put a little bit of an arc on the front face. This is just going to be a construction line. We're just going to make sure that this goes tangent with that. Three millimeters out there. Oops. Throw on some rough dimensions on this thing.
few constraints. We're just, again, this is an area where we're going to put, it's going to be our, our motor kind of gearbox area. That's going to continue a little bit to that side. I'm just going to create that. We're going to create another sketch on this side, but I'm going to grab the end profile so that I can start to key this all together. We're going to offset 0.5 millimeters, but to the outside to give ourselves some clearance. Did that, and now we can pull that this way. And that whole thing will just slide onto that base now. We want to add a little bit more of a differentiating style. Let's just uh, nah, I don't want to go that far. I just want to break up this front face a little bit. So we're going to add just kind of a change this to show the hidden edges. We're going to kind of just break this up, something like that. Finish that sketch. Lost a projection. Oh, I'm just going to undo that whole thing and start that sketch over. This again, this isn't a. Just trying to put a little bit of. Did it again. There we go. That took too long. We can we can work with that for now. Maybe we'll we'll add some knobs and buttons and stuff on this part of it in a little bit. But that's going to give us at least a place to start our the spindle. We want the spindle centered over this. So we're going to grab those lines, put a construction line up from the center. Now let's, how big? It's not big enough to fit a, let's see, what is it? another typical size bearing five eight three and a half right that's a typical you find that in like a lot of steering setups and smaller scale so let's go let's put an 8.5 millimeter hole in. Mm, damn it too big it's okay we could recess the bearing we'll make some clearances for that i think it'll be worth it so let's do exactly that let's Move this thing down, something like 5.5. So we're going to have to make some modifications to the original base, but this will allow, I want to put a, I want to put bearings in this thing. Uh, we are making a small little desktop type lathe for a scale shop or whatever you've got going on. So five, eight, three and a half, let's say you just, yeah, it's five, eight, eight, three and a half. Uh, so I need at least seven, let's say we double stack them, right? Let's 
something like that. One other thing we're going to do is I want to put a, a recessed hole in the back. That is around seven millimeters. We're going to take that 2.5 deep. I think I'll be able to show you why. So put that there. I'm gonna... Oh, I know what else I need to do. I'm going to modify this thing first. So this needs to be negative 7.5 at least. And I'm going to then put an out, I need a, I need something to help retain this all as well. So the bearings don't, so the whole thing doesn't just come out, right? The spindle. So I need to make sure that they, so we're going to, We gave it a little bit of extra. We're gonna put this 0.75 smaller. Then we're gonna bring that out one mil. So now I know currently that would not let everything just fall in, but we'll, we'll handle that. I'll, if we hide the first one, we're going to make a cut on the bottom. Give me those. Yes, it does. We're going to make these bearings load from the bottom. That makes sense. So we're going to have a couple of bearings and it's all going to kind of just load up from the bottom. And then the actual carriage will have a recess for it and it'll all hold it together. So a few other modifications to make. We'll do the same for uh, clearancing this rear section, which is made to, I'll modify that last sketch instead. That way we don't create another sketch to handle this. That. So right now we've got something that looks about like that. That's going to be able to hold two small bearings. We're going to have a screw that goes through it. The only thing I wish is that I had some bearings that used three millimeter through shaft instead. Hmm. I'm going to think through that. I have some five millimeter through shafts that I can use for this, but I don't want to make it too difficult for everyone else. So if I think of something different, I can always modify it before I actually upload to. So now we're going to start the actual spindle head of the lathe. First, I'm going to start just with a shoulder that would ride against the inside portion of a five millimeter bearing.
five point ah. We're going to start with here. So we need to make sure we have clearance between the bed and the actual where, you know, your three jaw chuck or whatever size you decided to put in there. that now let's extrude that out it's going to have to come a little way something like that now let's make it look like it's got a three jaw Oh, actually, I'm going to make one modification. So I made that cutout in the back side here, which is where I had thought I would put a screw through it to actually screw into the three jaw so that I didn't have a screw head in there. So I can actually make this center hole um, smaller. And I'm going to do that now. We're going to take that down to 2.5. So that adjusted all of it for us. We're going to go back and edit that sketch. So now let's just we're going to use a construction line from the center point to that. Make sure it's got a vertical constraint. And then to make things easy, I'm just going to create a constraint that lat that square on the outside edge. So then as I adjust it, you can see it resizes itself or keeps itself where it needs to be. That. We're going to drag it out about like that. We're going to create that as a new body for now because I want to do some cutting on the side first. Something like that. I'm not sure if there's some more standard. Uh, let me, I got an idea. drawing three lines here or I've got three lines here because I'm going to select these three and then make them equal also make sure that one is vertical that size so oh, I don't know why my vertical or my equal constraint did not work but Oh, it's because I already had a dimension on one of them. So that'll work like that. So I think that was too wide though, don't you think? Let's, let's narrow that thing up a little bit. We were at 1.8 for some reason. Let's go 1.25. Oh, still look bad. 
Oh, that was 1.8 out. I need to adjust the width in the sketch. So, technically we should put like a little bit of a chamfer edge on that first before we something like that looks a little bit better okay now let's rot or pattern this thing around why am I not modify circular pattern why am I not seeing it am I blind today Pattern, circular pattern, there we go. Objects, um, we need to change it to bodies. Select that, select the axis. This circle, three is correct. And there we have something that looks like a three jaw chuck. Combine those faces. We should probably add the uh, actual holes for the key chuck, right? We should get that, we should get that level of. So we're going to need to construct an offset plane. That's on the bottom tangent of that, but we can actually work with that. That'll work. Because obviously this thing's going to be able to rotate. So what we're going to do, if you're not familiar with what we're, this is like how you would tighten the tools inside of your three jaw chuck. Do a construction line at the center line back. And we need to put a square hole in it. Make sure these are all equal. And then just It's going to be a pretty small hole, so we'll go 0.75. That'd be right. Put a dimension on that out. That outer circle is just going to be like a small recess. Um, and I'll show you my plan with that in a second. Now oh, see it was actually kind of wasn't exactly where I needed that offset plane wasn't exactly where I needed it anyway, but it's okay because it's still gonna do what we're gonna what we need. So did our first cut on the bottom where you can't see anything. We're gonna go into that component since we're doing things in separate components. Now turn that sketch back on. And then do cut with that. And we'll take it in just uh, 0.75 as well. I feel like that when we did that first one, we could do two sides and the other side could be one negative point one as well there we go that's just so that i can actually get like that see that circle look i wanted that slightly recessed circle look now i'm gonna pattern that around i can't remember if that i think that gets patterned around all three times as well for the three jaw chuck 
So we're going to go back into pattern, circular pattern. We're going to change this to features. And we're going to grab those last two features we did down in the feature tree here at the very bottom of the screen. Select the axis of the center, doesn't really matter. And three again. Now, technically, okay, this is a four jaw chuck shown. I just can't remember if that, I feel like the actual uh, keyhole or the, the chuck holes are in line with the teeth, but this is a 3D printed ridiculous part that you guys get for free. So deal with it. I thought there was only one chuck point. I could be wrong on most. I thought there's multiple. I think there's multiple chuck points. Uh, three jaw chuck. Now there's multiple. Ugh, stupid pop-ups. Yeah, see, there's one there. Oh, and they are split between the jaws. So actually the way I did it was correct. But yeah, there's usually one, a chuck point between, or for each jaw to kind of get things, get things all, you know, squared up. So anyway, hey, thank you, JR, five bucks, appreciate it. So with this design now, this inner hole, the, the idea will be that you'll be able to screw in through the backside of the bearings into the chuck. And then since it's on bearings, it should roll. So mini lathe so far. That chuck, that jaw is too close. <laughs> I just don't feel like we should have made that. We're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to this one for a second. Um, we're gonna make this thing. Uh, we're gonna go twenty mil. Woo. Something went funky. I'm going to drag that tree back. Aha. My unconstrained sketch caught up with me. This is why you should draw properly and constrain your sketches. Oh, we had an extra line segment in there. That was what was tripping me up. Okay, now let's just... All right. There we have some things cleaned up. So I just did not like, you can see, you can see here that the chuck should be further above the bed than I had it. Mine was basically right on it and it just, that was, it looked terrible. So we're fixing, that's why we went back and adjusted that so we could raise this thing up. But as always, that does cause us some issues. Okay. Let's have a... 
So we have that coming in now. Problem here was that we just didn't have this coming far enough up now to cut to match our bearings. So now this thing sits far enough above the bed that we will have to make a uh, some sort of retention for him. I will be able to turn some styrene to make columns for my staircase. Nice. We've got we've got some work to do to make sure that this thing is going to be functional, but it's going to be we're going to get there. It'll be all right. I have ideas. I think I might make a clearance hole in the back so that you can actually bolt this thing through into the spindle. May may work. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Crazy CAD skills. How did you learn? Um, I was all I all I self-taught. I just kept getting in and I wanted to design my own parts, so I did. Shouldn't the spindle hole go all the way through? Stabby Josh, you are usually correct. Or you are correct, that is usually the case. I don't know if you're usually correct. Maybe you're related to me since you're a Josh, so maybe you are usually correct. Just happens that way with us, but um, I don't want it to go all the way through as far as the sized screw, but I want to make sure that you can get the shaft of a standard tool in there generally, which 3.5 millimeters on my Vanquish driver, so four millimeters should do. Cut that through to the back surface, and there we go. Oh, how did we lose our chuck? Dang it. We lost our chuck during... I'm not sure how that happened, but it might have had something to do with how I rolled back my sketches. Oh. That is unfortunate. I'm pissed about that now because I really don't want you guys to have to watch me redraw a very simple chuck. Undo. I don't know if un. Let's see. Um, let's see if we can go all the way to there. Nope. How far back do we have to go? I'm going to have to redraw, redraw that chuck just because if I go, I can only go back this far and it just doesn't, well, there it is. So, I just don't like this, uh, yeah, so it's like as soon as I went back and readjusted that one, everything with this lost its, Let's save real quick, just because lathe, lathing. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
if I just change that to 20, what happens? Okay, it stays there. Okay. See what still there. I like that position still. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to go back and edit. Every once in a while you get, I get one of these situations where I'm not, where I find myself, you know, in the, since fusion is not my, not my typical program of choice. Now, maybe if I go back, so I broke the, I broke the link where it had. Slide that there. Okay. I think we've got things back to how think we have things now how I want them. Okay. Whew, sorry about that. That was not the way that I wanted all of that to go. We're getting there. So where we're at is we have the motor area, the chuck, the base. We will need an actual like tray for this all to sit on at some point, but that'll be the easiest part. We need to come up with the, I wish I knew, I don't know the, uh, the proper terms for these things on a lathe. They're not what I, uh, like I have them, I've used them. I just don't know the proper things to call them. Oh wait, that's not that. I need this one. I'm going to move that front a little bit further out. Tails. I know the tail stock. I know that that's like, I know the. I'm talking more, not the tailstock back here, but the, the mechanism that actually holds the cutting tools that you have your, uh, you know, X and Y on. That's the one I don't know. <laughs> what is that thing supposed to be called? But we need the, the rod that's going to go from, you know, what would normally have the, uh, Ball screw, what would have the ball screw on it? The carriage, Mike says. 
So I need to have like the, the ball screw area that would come through. And I think I'm going to use, I'm going to create a, a hole in this one. And I'm going to try and I'm going to make this for like an eighth inch. Um, which is like just over three millimeters. Oops. And that way you should be able to find some material that you have that is somewhere around that where, whether it be a wire coat hanger, whatever it is, lead screw. Yeah. Um, whatever it is that you can cut and hopefully, uh, you know, use it as a piece of, of metallic area that'll kind of look like the, the proper, although eighth inch is a little, I think we can, maybe we go with like a 2.25 millimeter. I still think that something like a, a coat hanger may work. Um, or, you know, what might also work is typical solder, which is like 1 16th. You know, you might be able to just not, not get a nice piece stretched out and use that. Um, anyway, we're going to use the 2.25. You'll be able to find something. Probably, right? I have confidence in you. Three millimeters from the side. There we go. Um, so M2 one point. Yes, like I don't want to use an actual screw because I think that like, I guess you could if you had a 25, 25 millimeter fully threaded screw. Maybe if you cut it off and put it through there. But I think M3 is going to look too big. So I'm just going to throw something in there like that for now. Um, this is just going to be a pocket on this side that we're going to cut in. So that you can, and then we'll have another a support for it down here as well. And you'll be able to just kind of put it in there all together and it'll just, it'll look appropriate because we're going to tie in the carriage to it as well. Todd Proctor gave me four ninety nine. Appreciate it, Todd. Thank you. Um, I don't know what the longest M two screw you could get would be because we would only want the threaded section to look. I don't know. It's a possibility, but like if we if I go to this uh, if we inspect from this face to this face, that's forty seven millimeters. I bet you you would be have a hard time finding a fully threaded forty seven millimeter <laughs> screw. 50 millimeter. So we've got this here. Now let's work on a carriage. So we're going to do a new component on this. We're going to start the sketch. We're just going to start it on the previous, the original plane. I'm going to grab the profile of the end and transfer it over just so that we have also going to make sure that we grab the, uh, that circle and bring it over because I want to make sure I grab that when we're creating this carriage. So let's do a quick offset 0.5 millimeter. We should be able to use that exact screw size there or that hole size since we we're already kind of planning on it being a through hole. Um, this needs to just come up just above the bed somewhere. Come over. Let's do three millimeters total there. This side will go uh, 4.5 total. Three millimeters there. And we need to close this left side.
This side I don't think needs to go down as far. So we created that. Now let's do a, we'll do a symmetric overall length and we'll just, that's too much. 10 millimeters total. We can trim it down a little as needed. Um, Josh, that long screw steering link screw on the SMT 10 is pretty long. Yeah, I don't think it's this long. I don't think there's any screw in any axial kit over um, 30 millimeters. I think the longest one that axial uses is a 30 millimeter. Sometimes I use it for like upper link screws in um, some of them, but. Is the lathe going to be finished tonight or we split it between tonight and next week? Um, I think I can. I don't think I'm going to go crazy detail on this. This one's going to get finished tonight. The trailer might just have just only a little bit of work on it, but I think we're going to finish this one tonight. So this, now we need to put kind of our tool holding. Let's turn off some of these other. Oops. We need to create the, the riser block that normally the tool holder would be on. Dubro RC has 256 threaded rod. That would be a, I think that would be a great option. Something like that. Three, I think we'll keep it like that. Some, I'm look, I'm just. This is the the photo I'm looking at, so I kind of just this block here that I've got the the cursor over on the left photo is the one I'm looking at. Normally, this would be the area that you know you would expect to go in and out. This whole we'll have this carriage be able to move front to back. But I'm not going to try and make this thing so complicated that there's a, a left and right movement as well. That's, that's going to be more than you get tonight. So uh actually i just did that as a, a full extrude we're gonna edit that i'm gonna do here at the start we're gonna do offset plane and i'm gonna do like a two mil negative two millimeter and so actually let's just do negative one millimeters and do eight total Give us a one mil. That'll make it look a little less simplified, at least. What are we designing? We are designing a miniature lathe for your bench top in some sort of scale situation. <laughs> this piece here, I would probably. I don't know. We'll have to see how the best orientation to 3D print it would be. It's going to get a little interesting, especially when we kind of get up to this tool holder and stuff like that. You might just have to print this whole thing with a little bit of support. Do some cleanup on it when you're done. So this would be like your, your fine, what would that be? Would that be your Y axis on a lathe? I can't remember. I've never done CNC, y, CNC lathe programming. Well, 
So one thing is, is that we're starting to get, I need my tool area that, you know, this little, the little block that goes on top, I need it to be close to the center line. So I need to cut the overall height of this thing back down. Um, we're going to take this thing up to 1.5, but we're going to go back and modify. We're going to go back and modify that previous sketch on that one to be two mil. So that gets me closer that way. Now I'm, I'm still close to the center line of that. X and Z on a lathe, no Y. Gotcha. So Z is the, the length X is in. I guess we could take a little bit down on the this carriage size here. I've got three. We'll go down to two there. Okay, now we're looking reasonable. That's going to do. So we're going to make sure that this is a perfect square. We're going to offset it in by half of a mil. Go up one millimeter. Yep. One millimeter there. Then we need smaller inset in the center. There we go. I guess I could have just done an offset on that. I don't know why I didn't. So that'll be like your tool holder area typically. And we do need, so the one thing with lathes is that they've got lots of small levers and not, you know, all these little, like this lever on the top of the, the tool holder that would allow you to actually rotate the tools. That's pretty tiny. Trying to find ways to replicate those in decent ways that's 3D printable is a tough one. Not, not easy. Hmm. The, you know, the wheel on the outside, I think we could, we could make that simple enough that that's not gonna be too much of an issue but it's just those little levers that we have everywhere. And we still need a tail stock and we still need to add some detail, but let's, let's get a, well, one thing is that technically the tail stock would ride down the center of this, right? Make a nub that a screw can be put in as the handle. That might, something like that might work. Put some holes and make you guys figure out the handles. Now that sounds like something I'm a fan of. You figure it out. <laughs> so, I'm going to create a quick tray or pan for this thing. Sounds about right.
Okay. Two millimeters down. Now let's do a simple sketch on top, offset that edge, negative 1.5. We're just going to put a one millimeter on that. Now let's fancy that whole, let's do our let's radius everything first. Uh, let's do a, let's do a two mil. Now let's throw a chamfer around the bottom. And I still want to put a small chamfer on the insides. Okay, just because I don't like sharp corners, I'm going to put like a half mil on there. Unnecessary totally, but it looks better. I, so I say, we're going to need to put a countersunk hole, you know, screw from the bottom up. Uh, sorry, I'm missing some comments, it looks like. The servo washer for the wheel. Servo. Oh, hey, Neil. Servo washer. What is a servo washer? Bent shock shaft will work. There's an interesting one. <laughs> Solder or glue a piece of bent coat hanger. That wouldn't work. That would or that would work. Uh, do you watch YouTuber this? Oh, this old Tony. That's funny that you mentioned that Bar Harbor uh, Strat Guru up there, Neil. He is the one who uh, has has introduced me to this old Tony before. And I can't a hundred percent remember which, which person he is. If he was the one that I kind of liked to watch, um, but didn't, didn't enjoy it as much as what Neil was. The one that I like is uh, a bomb. A B O M. Um, he's a, a felt fabricator, welder, machinist. He's, he's pretty awesome. So, kind of created our uh, our tray for it at least. I'm gonna hit the A key to open up our appearance panel here. Go to metal. I'm just gonna use the aluminum one for now because I just wanna add some appearance to some of these parts just to help. I like being able to to differentiate between things. So we'll leave the pack or the guide rail, whatever. We'll leave that in silver, but you can kind of see the multiple and same with the chop. Dry humor and trickery, a bomb. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. The dry. Yes. So this old Tony is the one that Neil tried to get me to watch. And I just, I couldn't, couldn't get into his, his, uh, his style as much. Did you check out bad obsession mode? I didn't check them out yet. That was one I did write down, but I haven't checked. So let's see, we need, we definitely need a wheel on this one. I think that, I think that we could, let's do a sketch first. Mm, new component. On this. So if we were to add a wheel, I think we could do a, 
we can get away with a wheel that size without looking. Yeah, I like that. Six millimeter wheel. We're going to be able to put a, I'm going to make you guys use some smaller hardware though. You guys are going to have to find yourself some, some M2 hardware. I usually use M3 for everything, but I feel like this, this is going to require a slight bit more scale detail. Or if you have VP wheels, you can use some wheel hardware. And if you don't have VP wheels, you should anyway, so you should buy them just for these. It's fine. I don't care. So we're going to just create something like that. Very simple part to 3D print. I'm just going to throw a chamfer on the back to give it the, the wheel effect. Then the head of an M2 screw. Can we pocket out for it? So here's an, is this an M2 or M2.5? That's an M2. 3.75 millimeter head to it. So what does that look like? Um, at three point, yeah, we can add a, add a little bit of a recess for it. Not much, just a, just a bit. And then we'll just put a little bit of a round over on the outside. So an M2 screw will, will sit in there at least and okay. now we do need to modify the, oh, that's the, We're going to grab that circle so it gives us the center point. We're going to go 1.6 millimeter for the two millimeter thread so that this can actually cut in a ways. Make sure that it's only cutting the carriage, but we just made it a clear hole so that it, there isn't anything in the way. Okay. Um, Josh, how much was your lathe? My, um, I, I've had my lathe for like 10 years, 15 years. Um, no, probably 10 years. And I traded an RC car for it. I mean, it was like a $900 lathe at the time that I got for next to nothing. But it's, it's nice to have a lathe. So something like that. Now, a lot of these other areas, like we've talked about, there's, there's all these other knobs and things like that. I feel like some of this stuff, you guys may actually have to come up with something yourself <laughs> just because I feel like it's, it's one of those things that a, a small piece of bent metal heat with a lot heated with a lighter and then just pressed into 3D printing would probably add the, just the right amount of detail without having to worry about threads and stuff. Uh, did you guys get the five axis mill running at Vink? I saw, um, our, we don't run five, we run four axis. Um, just because for production stuff, like we run the, the four axis right now is kind of 
the the best option for us. Five axis is something that we may look into in the future, but right now it's not something that we not something that we run. So let's see. But right now our big four axis machine is being worked on, is currently down. It's very frustrating. This piece that I'm making here, I'm integrating into the, the rail setup and it is just, uh, it will be what will kind of capture that, that rail or whatever I was calling it, the ball screw area. integrated in about like that. So there's all this part. Do we want to add the, do we want to add a guard, like the, the guard for the back? I mean, I guess we could. I guess before we do that, I want to add a little bit of detail to this. Anyone else dropping frames? Um, oh, I did drop frames for a second. It looks like I don't know when it was, but it seems to be streaming fine now again. Let's add a little bit of, of detail over here. So now we're going to just draw a sketch on that new plane we created. And I just want to do a couple of things. I want to put like a just a recessed area. This one that I'm looking at up here has got like a digital display of what the RPMs are at most likely. Mine definitely does not have that. Mine is definitely not that fancy, but we're going to put a little recess in here on this one, at least just for, for style. What's 5.5 put me at? Uh, I don't like that. I don't know. It's not the worst thing ever, but I don't love it. What happens if I put a chamfer on these outside edges? Will it do it for me? Eh, that's okay. Just an area with a something. Make a spot for a voltmeter. I don't think, I think the voltmeter would actually be way too big for what we have here. <laughs> so let's do one more sketch on that new face and just do like a, what would be a, some sort of dial.
So we're going to put, whoops. That is not where I meant to put that sketch. Can I redefine, yes, redefine sketch plane. Oh, and then that plane disappeared was why. I meant to create the sketch plane on this component, but that didn't happen. I don't mind this. Uh, this is the first time that I've tried using components within the actual part level to uh, try and kind of organize things a little bit better. It was a, a tip that I saw. And I think it might have worked a little bit better on the trailer, but I feel like a project this size, I could do it my normal way and it would be it would come out just fine. Don't like that either. Okay. And then we're just going to put like a Whoa, extend it a little far. A little bit of detail on it, something to look at. I am going to We're going to add a hole on the top of this just because it needs a knob up there of some sort, but one point, oh, we're going to go, yeah, 1.5 for now. Put a hole through it so at least you could attach something that you can find around. Oh, the HD logo. Damn it. Should we, should we put it on top up here? Or should we make a back guard and put it on that? Hmm. Oh, see, we lost our Chuck uh, deals when we did that. I'm going to have to put those back in because I like that. All right, we're just going to put up top there. Seems like text HD impact font. Whoops. Impact. Angle 180. 10 millimeter looks about right tonight. I'm going to go negative 0.4. Indent cut.
Will this be functional with brushless power? <laughs> Depends. All right, it is 7.30. I think we're going to all the actual lathe portion of this. Let's see, where did that? Just trying to find where this. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Just had to find that one. I just didn't like it hanging out there. Um, I may have to make a tailstock before I finish it up and upload it. That would be the only thing. But for now, I think this one, let's save. For not having a plan of what we were going to do tonight or anything like that, I don't think it turned out too bad. I've got a little bit of adjusting to do, like to be able to make sure that this is all, you can actually assemble all of this and do, I need to put the hole through the backside to make sure that you can actually assemble it with bearings. It does have bearings. The spindle is supposed to run on two bearings that go on the inside. So. There you go, exactly. And if, uh, in case you don't have those bearings, I'll probably try and just draw up and include a couple of like bushing files so that you can put them in there in case you don't have that and you don't want to buy bearings for a non-functional scale lathe in your garage, your scale garage. So I'll try to make sure that it's a, a simple option one way or the other. So there we go, okay. That's saved for now. I'll wrap that thing up a little bit later tonight. And we're opening this trailer back up. Now, one thing. Last week, we did do a... Uh, we added a mount on the backside of this fender. And afterwards, it did make it much more difficult to, to 3D print. So I'm going to... I decided to take that back off so that this fender was still much easier to 3D print. And then I added a hole that goes up from the inside of the fender well, and it goes up through the cabinet situation. And then I added a pocket on the back side of that so that when you can, you can add an M3 nut in there and get a, and get that whole thing held together. I think that will help tie the, it, it'll tie everything together pretty well. We lost that connection point that we had between the floor and the frame, but you know, I think that's just kind of one of those things for now. So I got that added in there. I also mirrored it to the other side. You can see it over here. So this, this right side is not really complete yet because it needs, you know, there's a lot of things that we did on the left side here to get all of this, like it's cut in and recessed around all of these cabinets so that it all locks together more. And this side is not right now that they're not, now there's interference with these cabinets. So now you'll also see that currently I have also converted this file to using components for all of the items that we have in here right now. We'll see how I like it. I don't know. Um, at this point on this trailer, we, we've made a lot of progress on the big items, but we have to make sure now that this whole thing is constructible, start to put it together. You know, you can start, let's see if we turn off, um, leave that on. Okay, so huh, still got a couple of stragglers up here, but get those turned off. So if you've got this trailer tongue set up and the base chassis, you know that the, you can combine these two. 
We can also, we're going to turn off this suspension for now. You know, you can, you can build these two together. And then we've got, say, the trailer floor. Like that is what we need to probably look at being able to connect next. So we need to make sure that this will bolt into this without any issue. So to do that, we can either look at bolting up or down. Previously, we had looked at, you know, countersinking some, some nuts in here. And I think that works out just fine. But now we were doing that because that was where that fender was going to, to hang over. So if we're going to use this now, we kind of need to We need to add, you know, put that hole back in, which I think we can easily do. Let's just do that while we're here. We're going to use a construction hole. This file is getting a little messier than I would like at this point, but. Three point two millimeters since it's going to be a, a through hole and then. So if we add that, we need to make sure that we mirror that to the other side as well. We'll do a mirror. We're going to pattern features. So we're going to grab that hole there. And it's not going to let me. That's okay. We're going to, have to do that one by itself. Does Fast Eddie offer bulk pricing? So when I print all these projects, I have what I need. So far, up until that last project, I think we had used five by 11 bearings on everything. So you can just go get yourself like two 10 packs. You'd be pretty much set. <laughs> but let's do... So I just projected that and I'm just going to, since it wouldn't let me we're gonna mirror those about. We're going to cut it up to the same level as, damn, sometimes it won't let you select things. Let's go. Since I didn't know how deep I measured it, we'll just do it with the inspect tool, two millimeters. So I did it the same. And now we should be able to use the mirror features, grab that hole, select the mirror plane, which will be our right plane. And see if it did it which it did, but didn't go all the way through. It wouldn't cut both because we were only working on one component. So I'm going to undo that mirror and just do it ourselves. Point two. So two screws that will attach the backside of the trailer to the back portion of this chassis. Seems like it might be a good idea to add one more in the back just to try and keep everything, everything sturdy. 
I just think same. And up front, we're going to need some as well. So let's try and make some decisions on, let's do all of this at once. We're going to grab the polygon tool. We're going to grab put one up here on the center line. We'll properly center that in a second. I'm going to add one more to the back side of the frame. And I feel like we should add something up here for now, even though this, these may have to change positions depending on what we do for the suspension, since the suspension is still kind of open. I'm going to go five, seven, five. And I'm just going to select one line on each of these and make them equal so that I don't have to dimension each of them. I'm going to use a horizontal constraint to get everything. Whoa. That did some funky stuff. Weird. going to use some construction lines to keep everything symmetric. Now, there we go. Okay, getting these pockets put in place properly. Why is Nicole playing music by accident? All right. Oh, got to take care of this one. Okay, now we're going to cut those pockets in. This should give us more than enough connection points throughout this trailer to keep the floor nice and attached. We'll add the holes to there here in a second, or I can do that off. But once we get those in, let's, I think we need to look at the fender first. So we dry, bring the fender in. I don't know why. It... So we drop the fender on like that. Well, it'll attach with two screws to the floor. We'll have the same situation on the other one. Then we'll look at bringing on the left side panel. The left side panel will drop into the groove we created on, on that. So it should be just pretty simple. And then this, the side doesn't actually attach to. <laughs> What's up, Matt? Hello, thank you for joining. So we've got that, but what we need to do is we need to add some connection points for this trailer side to the, uh, the floor of the trailer as well. Otherwise that just 
it's just not going to. So let's work on that left side panel. And one thing I want to do is we're going to create a sketch on that outer wall. I'm going to go grab this profile from the side. And let's see what, okay, we have plenty of room here for a reasonable size screw. So we're going to add a 3.2 millimeter hole. I think we'll add two of those. Do a line. Sure those are the same. Do 65 millimeter spacing and then we'll just kind of come up with about like that. Oh, one thing I need to do is make sure that we're centered in the base of the floor. Did not want to. Why will that? <laughs> doesn't want to. There we go. It's weird. Why will it not let me use? does not want me to use a midpoint constraint on a line. There it goes, weird. Okay. Cut that. Go 15 millimeters in. Oh, that is actually incorrect. We do not want to go 15 millimeters in. We only want to go to the back side of the wall because those were those were clearance holes, not threaded holes. And I should probably I don't know that I need one back here because this fender should technically keep it supported in the proper direction. We're going to, we're going to not add that for now, just because. Now, since the, what do we want to call this kitchenette? Since it recesses into these sides, that thing's going to kind of have to be, the sides are going to have to be separated a little bit and that thing's going to have to drop in. Um, And then once it's in there, that will help because we've got two screws planned to go in from the sidewall into this, which will get those both sides locked together. And then you'll put one screw through the bottom of the fender into the kitchenette on each side, and that will really pull everything down. And now that whole structure basically should be locked in. That's actually thinking through it that way. That should get us this structure in a, a really sturdy place, you know, including a, another fender there. So that's actually, that makes me feel better. I like that. I like what I've done. I agree with me. Another bubbly. So from here, we've got the, what do we have? The, uh, why was that off? The rear hatch, we still have to work through. Attaching the roof is going to be 
well, it's kind of this roof and front structure. I need to add some bosses on the side panels, I think, to start allowing that to kind of fold over and give us a number of places to, to screw into. 3D printed mount for, oh, you guys are talking about the monthly mayhem builds. Yes, monthly mayhem. That, I have not, Matt is ahead of me. He has filmed his intro, he's filmed his baselines. I have done none of that. I was out filming all day today for something else. And, uh, I really need to get to work on Monthly Mayhem now. <laughs> yeah. That's all that really matters, Josh. Agreeing with ourselves. I, you know what? I agree. So I'm going to turn off this right side. I'm going to work on that left side panel. And I'm going to make some mounts to attach the roof. I'm going to grab that profile and then I'm going to turn the roof off. Roof, 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 roof. So these should be weren't oh, oh crap wasn't i planning on printing this whole thing flat i guess i could just add some screws not you know what no you're gonna have to use some support material because i want this to yeah because that's how I want this thing to look. So the back side is going to use a bunch of support material to get it to print well, because I want the outside to be the good looking face. And then the back side, you'll want to print it down on the bed, a bunch of support material. It's the way it's going to be. Rather than, add, I don't want to add a bunch of screws to the outside to go through to add yeah, put bosses on the, sh the roof and get screw into the walls. That's what I, I don't want to do. I don't want uh, a bunch of screws from the outside of those faces. So the top is fine. You're going to have a roof rack, roof rack over it the whole time. So I, I think a bunch of hardware up there is, is just not going to be nearly as off-putting. Let's see. Those equal, and then we're going to make that equal. Oops. We're going to do the same over here. We're going to add two of them. equal and then we're going to do this and this one and this and this one six millimeter i think that is going to do it Josh, do you think that one of these nights you could modify an STL file from Thingiverse? Possibly. Um, it's never a it's never a great process, so it's one of those like we could find one and I could just try and and see what I could do with it. It's just not something I normally do myself. So.
Why did it not create a line? That's funny. Yes, this is going to take a lot of support material, but I think for the cleanest trailer, it's the way to go. Crick, crick did I say, I don't say, well, I used to say crick. I don't say crick anymore. I said crick growing up though. We're gonna play in the crick. That was just what you did. And one other, I'm going to modify that feature. I'm going to turn the roof back on. Hmm. We're going to go two sides. Other one, also going to drag it up. Make sure it cuts that as well. Okay. It. Why is it not grabbing a? Oh, just not. So now we're two more mounting holes. equal 2.5 six that way Turn it back on two sides pull the other one out so now we're going to be able to cap that whole front and top. It'll take eight screws total, four on each side. That'll get that'll get copied over to the other side and everything will be good to go. So now we would be able to have, turn the right side on as well. We would have a fender, but this would all be easily, easy to assemble as you see it. Rear tail seat, skylight. How did I have that planned? I don't know that I planned on any hardware for that. It kind of just sat in. That one, that one, I think you're looking at, you know, if you want to use it with clear PLA or anything like that, you're going to have to use some sort of just like shoe goo that otherwise hardware is going to show. And I don't think you want hardware to show on something like that. So roof racks, a whole nother thing. Cabinet doors were easy. We uh, are screwing those in from the backside. 
with overlapping and they were made with some tolerance so that they kind of jiggled in there so that those are the cabinet doors that are on the inside here. Oops. Those two doors on the inside. One there, one there. Where is the... I thought I had a... I know I have a tailgate in here, don't I? Or is it... No, nope, that's all that still. Am I just not seeing it? Huh. Well, I either have to recreate it or I lost it somehow. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But slow progress on the trailer. We got our we got our lathe done or you know, at least started. I'll add a little bit more detail on this, kind of clean some things up, make sure the, the whole thing assembles properly, and then I'll get it uploaded to Thingiverse tonight. But I'm gonna cut this one short. I've got a bunch of other things to, uh, to get cranking on as well. So a couple hour stream tonight, a little bit shorter than normal, but I think that's reasonable. So, if you guys, uh, have other suggest I'm hoping to kind of wrap up this trailer soon. I think I'm I'm ready for it to kind of be done and out. Uh, you know, it's going to need some some tweaking. I need to get the suspension worked out and make some decisions on that. That's one of those ones that I feel like I'm going to have to think through and and possibly that might not be the best situation on on live just because it's going to be a lot of kind of back and forth and that's rarely has any entertainment value. So the leaf spring setup though that one should be fairly simple and straightforward. And hopefully I can get that knocked out because that's I, obviously all of you guys want leaf springs, right? A house plant next. Yes. Yes. A house plant high on my list. That, and, that and the Crocs are still, those are one and two right now. A scale low profile floor jack. Floor jacks are kind of cool. That's always an option. They're, they're small enough. I think that we could, Knock one of those up. Pans for the stove. But there we are. Thanks for joining as always, guys. These streams are getting, they've picked up enough that uh, I think that they make their, their stream that I'll, I'll continue doing for now because I think that uh, it is something I, I enjoy as well. And a little bit of a break from the normal RC stuff that I do. Just saying, cat carrier, a giant cat wheel. Yes, to go a, a miniature giant cat wheel since we have the full size. All right, guys, that's all I got for tonight. Thanks for joining. It's awesome. We'll see you Monday or well Tuesday for the scale news update. And I don't think that I'll have anything. I don't think I have anything for Monday to post yet. Maybe I do. Al, I do have a video that I do need to get posted. Maybe I'll get that done tonight and get that posted for the morning. Fun stuff. Thanks as always, guys. We'll see you next time.